Dom and the team. And Koma, if you can tell us what's happening there at the moment. You're welcome to the Accra Sports Stadium, which is playing host to the MPP's National Delegates Conference. Behind me is where all the action will be unfolding in a few minutes. I have just seen some of the party executives streaking in. Peter McMenu is leading a host of party executives who have just arrived here at the Accra Sports Stadium. I have to say, uh, Alfred, that if you come here, many of the uh, individuals, party supporters and sympathizers are putting together the final touches for the event to begin proper. I've heard the Director of Operations and the presidency lord Comey, for example backing out instructions inside the perimeter of the stadium proper for all events to be put in place so we start and i'll be running by you some of the key happenings that are expected to go down here in a short time before even the elections expected to happen somewhere after 2 p.m according to the program we have and so we know that the outgoing executives will be expected in a short time once conference opens to give you know an address over the stewardship of the party, according to them, you know, they are going to give an account of what they've been doing in the past three to four years that they've been at the helm of affairs. We'll be engaging some of the party executives shortly to understand exactly what this event means to the party. And of course, we've heard them say a lot of times that they are working to break the proverbial eight. Would that be possible? Of course, we've been speaking to some of the delegates. They have been expressing optimism about the exercise expected to happen. And as you can see in your picture, a streak of uh, vehicles, uh, con which is uh, ushering some of the party executives over here. As I mentioned earlier, I saw Peter McMenu leading some of the executives in. Uh, we'll be engaging some of them as and when they uh, join us here on the program. But let me have a conversation with William Evans Inkum. He's been our man who's been you know, following all the events from the Ashanti region up until yesterday. Uh, we touched base here at the Accra Sports Stadium for the events to happen. But before I get to Evans, you can see in your picture more of the dignitaries are uh, coming through uh, you would find them uh, coming through. Let me uh, quickly engage uh, a former director of communications of uh, the NPP. He is going to be uh, having a conversation with us. He is in the person of Yao Adumaku uh, Thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to TV3. Thank you, please. So we know in a short time everything is going to kick start in there. But how crucial is this conference to all of the aspirations of a party from where you sit? Yes. Uh, our intent is to break the eight. And it's something historic. Uh, so if you are going to achieve the target set, today's election is, 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 is going to be a, 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 a platform, or a, 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 let me say a platform to really push us. Okay. So it's something we are not uh, toying with it at all. I've heard people but say, before, for... before I go there, right. let me use your medium to really congratulate uh, all the rank and file in the party. We have done so well. We have done marvelously well. We started from the polling station. We went to the electoral area, subsequently to the constituency, then to the region, up to the national. Nothing untoward has happened. Normally, one of the features of um, elections that is normally conducted by a party that is in government is that it's normally associated or characterized by uh, violence, uh, conflict, and those things. But MPP, uh, as typical of it, has been doing it all along that this time round too, we have even done it better okay. to the extent that nothing but peace has prevailed. So everybody needs to be commended. And our pray prayer is that at the end of the election today, the same peace that we started is going to be associated with us. And it's our plea that the rest of the political parties also follow our, uh, our, 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 our example. I want to so, find out from you, the outgoing executives of your party, have they discharged their duties creditably enough? And looking at the circumstances we find ourselves in as a country and even your party. Uh, I wouldn't say the outgoing, because some of them are contesting. And it's likely some of them are also going to win. So if quickly I say that they're outgoing, it means I'm endorsing and in effect I'm trying to say that they should jettison them. Let's speak so specifically about, about Freddie Blay, the chairman of the party. He's not seeking re election. Well, well, on the whole, uh, on the whole, the uh, purpose or the aim of the executive was to capture political power and they did it. Of course, there were one or two reasons, and especially in the case of uh, a lot of uh, some of our seats that were wrestled or taken away from us. It will not be 
the, the, the right basis or enough basis to judge them. The intent is that we voted for them to capture political for us, uh, political power for us, and they've done that. On that note, they should be commended. The most important point is that those who be fortunate to be elected this time around, when they come, they should also take a sit down and take stock of the performance of the previous ones. Was it Socrates also who said that life on examine is not worth living? So the point is that I'm not here to be judgmental. They have done so well. But then for the, uh, those who be elected, when eventually they have the nod and they come, they sit down, they should sit down and take stock of the performance. So I'll not be here to be judgmental. Okay. I commend what they've done so far. Before I let you go, Mr. Befi, um, the former president said, uh, Former President John Kufour has been speaking to us. He was guarding, warning you to guard against factionalism. It would appear that in your party, even at this stage, there appears to be factions in the party. How are you oh, looking to paper TV3, across those cracks? Uh, TV3, a lot of you are my friends. And over there, factionalism is also there. You can never, even in church, I'm a seven-day Adventist. I went to church before I came here. I right from here, I'll go back. Over there, it is there. Jesus Christ came. He had his people. Someone, somewhere, we say that there's a fashion. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had his people. Someone also did that. But then the extremism, the extreme form of it is what we should condemn. Okay. At the end of it all, uh, we disagree to agree. And the moment we disagree on certain issues, it doesn't mean that there is a division. So at the end of it all, MPP is united. I missed whatever angle that uh, people will be looking at us. The intent is that we are breaking the eight. Okay. And if you are to break the eight, nothing but unity, nothing but forgiveness, nothing but sacrifice. I mentioned, I mentioned that this is uh, my last question, but pardon me, this is another final one. I've been speaking to delegates, especially uh, when I went to UPSA this morning. Yes. Some of them raised concerns about communication. They say that you, the party executives, have not been effective with your communication, even today, the grassroots, before you even communicate to the people who you will be seeking their votes in 2020. Communication, communication, communication. Communication, communication, communication. Do you know what? Uh, rather they should sympathize, rather they should sympathize with the communicators. In the sense that organizers are there, general secretary is there, whoever is there. But at the end of it all, because the communicators are visible, anything they are blamed. But then it doesn't mean that there aren't so many things. Today's uh, communication eh, has assumed a different dimension because politics over the years uh, is about public inf uh, po opinion. It's about perception. You understand it. So for communication to be very effective, listen, and this one I'm trying to be generic. I'm generic. I'm generalizing everything in this case. For communication to be effective, you need to identify your connectors. Okay. You need to identify your wrap up for me quickly. You understand it? Right. So that the, 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 the media, the civil society, the academia, and now all the workers' groups should also be part of. I think when they are brought on board, it's going to be effective. But sometimes, too, it's rather unfortunate that they single out the party communication. But when you talk of communication, parliament be part of the communication party communication, Ministry of Information, and then subsequently the presidency. The four of them can sing from a single notebook. But the idea where always only the party communication is single out, for me, same time, my heart bleeds. Yes. Thank you very much. So you heard there, um, he is uh, Yao Adumaku Befi. He is uh, a former director of communications of a party. Let me uh, speak quickly to uh, Mr. Sami Uku. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uku, for joining us. Uh, Congratulations are in order, you know, on your uh, party yeah. holding this event. By the end of this event, what will be a success story for you, knowing that you've been, you know, an executive of a party, an organizer? Uh, uh, good morning once again. And I, I think the success uh, of this event will be the NPP coming out victorious and as one collective piece. We believe that we've worked hard as executives. We've worked, we've worked hard to put together this event as well. We spent sleepless night. I left here around 2 a.m. together with my colleagues to make sure that the lighting system, the PA system, the sitting arrangement, the security coordination, everything on the grounds was in shape. And I'm excited that today the delegates are also poised and determined uh, to also uh, come participate in the decision-making process. This election is crucial because it offers the party an opportunity uh, for us to also uh, prepare the machinery towards election and victory 2024. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, the new patriotic party will come out strongly and victorious today. I want to put you to the spot and ask you, would you say that the executives uh, that are outgoing 
quote unquote, have discharged themselves quite simply and deserve, you know, some commendation. I'm sure I you think, are part of those. Or, or, okay. I think, I think, individually and collectively, we have performed the duty and the task assigned to us. It's up to the NPP uh, delegate and fraternity to also judge us based on the content and what we've done. We promised to deliver victory and we delivered victory. You lost some seats in, in, in Parliament, you lost a number of votes and so that, that's how come we have a hung Parliament now which has been, you know, a, a, a concern for many individuals and political watchers. Would, would that not be a, a taint on your well, uh, reign? The, the, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Let's say going into a tournament, you are praying, you're working hard towards three goals and a three points. You get to win three points and one goal but you get to scrape in to move to the next stage. And I think that me and my colleagues from the Freddie Blay leadership, the Freddie Blay executives, I believe that uh, we were able to do uh, our bit to move the party forward. It's up to the next crop of party executives and leaders to also enjoy that maximum support and cooperation to also help move uh, the NPP to the next level. Be your, you know, ideal candidates to inherit your, your office. <laughs> You are putting me on the spot. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to help uh, organize the ground and be impartial as well. But uh, I, I've worked with colleagues and I wish them well. Hey there, Sami Ewuku. He is uh, the organizer of the MPP. He is not, of course, seeking re-election. And for those of you who are watching us, this is a TV3. We're also live on 2FM.